Hey, English one. So uh, today we're going to talk about this idea of quotation integration. Uh, quotation integration is very simply where you take your words and words from the story and you blend them into one sentence or two sentences or three sentences, but where you blend them together to make a strong piece of support for your ideas. And you want them to come together. That's why it's integration. It's putting them together. So we're going to look at the interlopers and the necklace and what this means. So first off, you have to start with a claim. A claim is very simply an idea that you have and that you're sharing. So in an essay or in a paragraph, you are going to make some kind of claim. You're going to say something about the text. That's your claim. Then you have to support it. You have to find evidence in the story that can support your idea. What makes your idea correct? Okay. Uh, and so you have to support your claim with evidence. All right. All right. So we're going to look at the interloper specifically. We're going to look at the idea of mood here in a minute, but, um, let's look at how to integrate the text. So using the story to support your text. So if I make the claim that Ulrich is a really nice guy, I'm going to have a hard time supporting that text. So if I'm saying he's a really nice guy at the beginning of the story, he is not nice. In fact, he wants to hunt and kill his enemy. So these ideas do not match up. That is not good evidence. And I would not want to use that as my evidence. However, as we get further on into the end of the story, Ulrich says he's changed his mind. If my men are the first to come, you shall be the first to be helped. So that evidence does support my text, whereas this evidence does not support my claim. Right. So um, oh, let's see here. All right. So now let's talk about the idea of mood. OK. What words in the text make for a good mood? And I went through and I picked out some. You could pick out lots of others. But the wind scourged night, the disturbing element, the fierce shriek as the tree breaks and falls, the hideous fear as he laughs and he sees the wolves coming, the movement and unrest of the animals in the forest. And there's just this tone, this feeling, this mood of eerie, creepy discontent, right? So when I think about mood and if I'm asked to write what is the mood in the story, I'm going to look for text that will support that idea of mood. All right, so let's go on. So if I am asked, what is the mood in the interlopers? Here is my idea where I'm going to make the claim and I'm going to support it with the text. The mood is one of intense suspense. It takes place on a wind scourged night and the characters feel hideous fear. And you see, I've got these quotation marks that go around words that are from the story because that is my evidence. The mood is frightening. So this is just a different take. It's just another way to do it. Okay. The mood is frightening because of movement and unrest and a fierce shriek of a breaking of the branch. Again, we use the quotation marks here around the words from the text, right? All right, so let's take a look at these sentences again because I want to point something out. Everything in blue are my words. Everything in green are words from the story. And look at how they go. The mood is one of intense suspense. It takes place on A, my words. Wind scourge night. Those are words from the text. And you see how it's right in the middle of my sentence. It's integrated with my own words. We don't want them separated. We don't want blue and green separate. We want them together, mixed in together. They have to be mixed in. And the characters feel hideous fear. Same thing down here. The mood is frightening because of my words, movement and unrest, words from the text. And A. My words, fear shriek, words from the text. 
of a breaking tree branch. My words, not from the text. So the point here is to make sure that when you use a quote, you mix it into your own sentence. And it has to read clearly. If you read these, they make perfect sense. It doesn't even sound like there's any kind of, you know, break in the idea of the sentence. The mood is frightening because of movement and unrest and a fierce shriek of breaking tree branch. You don't even hear any kind of like pause. It just flows perfectly. Okay. So that's how you do a really good quotation integration. Let's look at uh, the idea of characterization in the necklace. All right. So if I'm writing about the character of the story, if I claim that Matilda Locelle is a kind and generous person, I'm going to have a difficult time supporting that idea. Because frankly, when you look at the text, you get mostly ideas like this. She suffered constantly, filling all the attributes of a gracious life. Every luxury should rightly have been hers. So these do not match up, and I cannot make this claim. So I either have to change my claim, because I don't have any evidence. There's nothing to support this idea. So if I were to turn this in as an essay and say, Matilda is such a kind and generous person. She's so loving and good. There is not a single thing that I can say to prove it, which of course would be terrible, right? Because there's nothing to suggest she is a kind and generous person. Quite the opposite, actually. All right. So if I claim that Matilda is selfish and materialistic, then I've got lots to choose from. I could use the one that I just pointed out. She suffered constantly, feeling that all the attributes of a gracious life, every luxury, materialistic, selfish, should rightly have been hers. Madame Locelle looked old now. This is towards the end of the story. But sometimes she would sit by the window and muse over that party long ago when she had been so beautiful, the belle of the ball. So it's this idea of she finally gets a break in her rough, difficult day as she has to work so hard now to pay off their debt. And what does she remember? Not that, like happy times with her husband, not that she's learned a lesson and made new friends or changed. Her. No, she remembers when she was the most important person in the room. She remembers how physically beautiful she was, right? So it's all about making the right claim and finding evidence that can support it. Because if you make the wrong claim and you have no evidence, then you can't make that claim. And if you make a good claim and you've got lots of good evidence, well, then your writing will be really strong and your ideas will be really good. All right, let's continue on and share a couple more ideas. So uh, here's some more examples. So what kind of woman is Matilda Locelle? That's the question. So now I'm going to make the claim. At dinner, Matilda is never satisfied. What kind of woman is she? She's a woman who is never satisfied. That's my claim. Instead of being happy, she would visualize elegant dinners. Right? Instead of being satisfied with the meal in front of her, she only thinks and imagines fancy feasts. All right, and then another example. When her husband worked to get, <clears throat> excuse me, when her husband worked to get her an invitation to a fancy party, she wasn't excited. What kind of woman is she? Not excited about a fancy party. Instead, she was annoyed. What kind of woman is she? She is annoyed and not excited because she didn't have a fancy dress to wear. And so this word comes right out of the story. And I'm using it to support the idea of what kind of woman she is. So they go together, they work together to support my idea. The quote and my claim support my answer. That's how we want things to look. That's how we want it to work. All right, one more time. If we look at it this way, look at my words versus words from the story. Is there more blue or more green? Is there more of me or more of the text? 
And why do you think that is? There's much more of my words than of the story, and you need to keep that in mind. Look at uh, both of these ideas. So do I write more, or does Saki or Mr. Maupassant, the authors of these two stories, who writes more? Here is the first one, Saki, the interlopers. A lot more blue than green. A lot more blue than green. And then the necklace. A lot more blue than green. A lot more of me than of them. Why? Because I am the one sharing my ideas. And when you are writing your essay or your paragraphs, I want to hear more from you. So if you're using huge chunks of the story, nope, wrong -oh. I don't want to see that. I don't want to hear that. Okay? I want to hear mostly from you. Use just bits and pieces. As we get started with this, use one word or two words, maybe a short sentence, right? I've got one, two, three, four, five words here. That's fine, okay? But not entire sentences, not entire paragraphs. Most of the work should be coming from you because I want to know your thoughts. So in my examples, I did most of the writing because my goal my purpose is to explain my thoughts and to use the story as support. So um, that is explaining how to do this. Now, it's going to take a lot of practice. It really is. Okay. And so we are going to practice. So uh, next, you are going to start practicing this and it will be difficult. Right? I'm here to help you. But um, so you have to make a claim, find a passage that supports your claim, Clearly explain the claim, right? And use the passage in a way that makes sense in your sentence. All right? So what I want you to do now is to write a couple of small paragraphs. And my examples here are all small paragraphs. They're one, two, maybe three sentences. Okay? They, you do not have to do a lot of writing here. But I want you to find a text to support your claim and write it into your sentence. Okay. Textual quotation integration. All right. I think that covers that for now. We had no interruptions, no bells, so we got through it. So I think we are good to go.